Hey everybody, it's uh, Conservation Saturday. Thanks for joining us to kick it off. My name is Lan Tawney. I am the president and CEO of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, coming to you live from Missoula, Montana, our headquarters. And uh, you know, this is a special thing that we get to do today. And I really want to, you know, welcome our North American board members, life members, chapter leaders from all across the country, uh, those folks that bought uh, tickets for the for the original rendezvous uh, and didn't ask for a refund. Like we're all here together and it feels like there's probably people that hit every one of those categories that are here today. But thank you for joining us on a Saturday. So right now, we're at this pivotal moment. This pivotal moment for this, this, this once in a lifetime kind of opportunity. And quite frankly, it should have happened back in 1964 when they first originally passed this legislation, which is full and dedicated funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund. But now we're here and we can actually get that done. In addition, we have the $1.9 billion for five years for backlog of maintenance. And that's for the National Park System, that's for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, that's for the Forest Service, that's for the BLM. This is this opportunity. And I don't have to talk about the Land Water Conservation Fund. You all are our top volunteers. I just want to say thank you. We didn't get here by accident. We did not get here by accident. And then whether that was phone calls, whether that was emails, whether that was going out to Washington, D.C., whether that's intercepting staff and members back home. You all made this happen. You all made this a priority. And so I'm super excited about today and like just now with this House legislation that got introduced, we've already had 6,000 people take action. You all are action takers. So here in a second, we're going to hear some videos uh, from two senators, uh, Senator uh, Joe Manchin from West Virginia, Senator Cory Gardner from Colorado, highlighting the bipartisan support uh, for this legislation. And then it's going to be, we have a really special opportunity to talk to their chiefs of staff. And I say it's a special opportunity because their chiefs of staff are working every single day, know the ins and outs of D.C., and are going to be able to pass along some knowledge to us that is invaluable. So I encourage you to listen. I encourage you to learn. And then I encourage you to act. Right? And you are all action takers, and I know you're going to do it individually, but I also, this is time to rally those around you. Again, this is our moment this next week, and what you learn today and carrying that forward will help us get us over the finish line. So without further ado, we're going to start these videos from both Joe Manchin, Senator from West Virginia, Corey Gardner, Senator from uh, Colorado. Thank you again. Hello, backcountry hunters and anglers. I'm United States Senator Corey Gardner from the beautiful state of Colorado. Your voices have never been more important as we are close to capping off years of bipartisan work to fully and permanently fund the Land and Water Conservation Fund. It's one of the smartest ideas in our country's history, and that's setting aside our natural treasures to be owned and enjoyed by the public at large. And we're on the cusp of one of the greatest achievements in our lifetimes to ensure that our lands are protected and accessible for generations to come. Growing up in Colorado, I learned to appreciate the great American outdoors long ago, and I've been fighting to protect the Land and Water Conservation Fund and our public lands since my very first day in office. Soon, the Senate will be considering my bipartisan Great American Outdoors Act, which permanently and fully funds the LWCF, the crown jewel of our conservation programs, and addresses the nearly $20 billion maintenance backlogs at our national parks and other federal public lands, like our forests and BLM lands. As I'm sure you know, the LWCF supports projects in every single state at no cost to the American taxpayer. And fighting every year to figure out how much money the program will receive doesn't provide the kind of long-term planning certainty that our outdoor and conservation communities deserve. Full and permanent funding for the LWCF will help expand greater access for uh, sportsmen and recreationists to experience the lands that we all own together, to hunt, to fish, to camp, and enjoy all kinds of recreation activities. The Great American Outdoors Act also takes it a, a step further and addresses the maintenance backlog on our federal lands, which has ballooned to approximately $20 billion in deferred projects. This backlog includes everything from routine repairs to buildings and other structures on site to, to roads, bridges, and tunnels used to access those lands. The Great American Outdoors Act will not only protect the lands that we cherish, but in addressing the outstanding maintenance backlog, it will provide billions of dollars in funding for new jobs in states like mine and across the nation, which is needed now more than ever. Because of years of hard work and organizations like yours, the Great American Outdoors Act has widespread support on both sides of the aisle and in the White House. 
I look forward to working with my colleagues to usher its passage quickly through the Senate, and I hope that the House will do the same. Now is the time for bold, bipartisan action to create immediate job opportunities and to protect our public lands. Thank you for your support on this crucial legislation. I look forward to getting this across the finish line with you and having a historic accomplishment to celebrate in person at next year's rendezvous. Hello, I'm Senator Joe Manchin, ranking member of the Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee. Thank you all for inviting me to participate in your rendezvous today. So much has happened in the last three months since the Great American Outdoors Act was first introduced. We're now in the midst of both a health and an economic crisis, and our country is hurting. Our, our, our new reality brings into sharper focus why it is so important for us to work quickly to enact the Great American Outdoors Act. So I'm very happy to say, we'll be beginning Senate consideration of this important bill on Monday. And I believe we'll see a strong bipartisan vote to pass the bill. We have an incredible opportunity before us to finally reach a goal that so many of us have fought to realize for so long, to provide permanent mandatory funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund at its fully authorized level of $900 million annually. In its 55-year history, LWCF has only been fully funded twice. In fact, over $22 billion has been deposited into the LWCF account, but never appropriated. So it's important to get the Great American Outdoors Act enacted to ensure that the full $900 million is available to continue making our public lands accessible for hunting, fishing, and all forms of recreation. And I'm so proud to serve as the Vice Chairman of the Congressional Sportsman's Caucus. Hunting in West Virginia is enjoyed each year by the young and old, rich and poor, and by both Democrats and Republicans. I think it is fair to say these hunting traditions are not just a hobby. They are a way of life for the people in my state. Every year, more than 350,000 hunters take to the woods in West Virginia to pursue game, and they bring with them $270 million in contributions to West Virginia's economy and support over 5,000 jobs. Nationally, 47 million Americans participate in hunting and fishing, and in doing so, they provide direct economic benefits in excess of $200 billion per year and support over 1.5 million jobs. Boston University just released a study showing that fully funding LWCF, as was intended 55 years ago, will support 15,000 to 28,000 jobs at a time when our country needs it most. Fully funding LWCF will increase the amount of funding provided to secure the access for sportsmen. Sportsmen and sportswomen need places to hunt and streams to fish. When we permanently authorized LWCF last year with a strong bipartisan vote of 92 to eight, we included a provision that requires at least 3% of LWCF funds to be used on projects that are specifically designed to expand access to sportsmen. The Great American Outdoors Act will put an additional $12 million towards this cause, and I cannot be prouder of that. The Great American Outdoors Act also includes $9.5 billion for deferred maintenance projects on federal lands. The impact of failing to fund maintenance for so long is clear to see. I think each one of us has seen it on the roads and trails we use to access the woods. And like the LWCF funding, this investment will provide a significant benefit to the outdoor recreation economy. Simply investing in deferred maintenance projects could deliver more than an additional 110,000 infrastructure related jobs. The Great American Outdoors Act includes both of these strong bipartisan investments in conservation. LWCF has been able to do great things with the funds that have been appropriated, which in recent years have averaged about half of the authorized funding level, and in the previous years even less than that. Just imagine the good that we can do for our country with the full $900 million annually. We have broad bipartisan support with 59 co-sponsors, which is representative of how important these bills are to every state in the U.S. And these proposals came through the Senate Energy and Natural Resource Committee, on which I serve as the ranking member with strong, strong votes. We have support from the administration, and we appreciate the unwavering support from our conservation and sportsman groups like all of you. It is a shining example of bipartisan work and of both Democrats and Republicans coming together to put politics aside to do what is best for conserving the natural resources of this great nation of ours. 
getting the Great American Outdoors Act enacted will be an historic achievement and leave a legacy for our grandchildren and generations to come. Thank you for having me join you today and thank you for your support. God bless each and every one of you. All right, and we're back live. Um, I just wanna thank Lantani for the opening remarks and then for the senators who could not be here today, you know, um, thank you so much for taking the time to report about the Great American Outdoors Act. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Julia Peebles. I'm the government relations manager for Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. And I'm excited to be here today with our guest. Um, they are very instrumental on the Hill for these two Senate offices. Um, so I'm just going to introduce them real fast. We have Curtis, if you want to wave. Hey, Curtis. Uh, he's the chief of staff for Senator Gardner, Republican from Colorado. Then we have Lance. Hey, Lance. Uh, he's the chief of staff for uh, Senator Manchin, a uh, Democrat from West Virginia. So this is a very bipartisan bill that I'm excited uh, for them to dive into. Um, you know, this is a huge issue for us. It's and your your bosses have been champions. So I just want to thank you guys again and Senator Gardner and Manchin for really championing this. Um, Hunters and anglers have been working on this for years, as you guys well know. I know you guys have been working on this for years as well. Um, so is there anything that you guys would like to add um, that the senators uh, didn't cover or want to go more in depth about? maybe about the importance of the Great American Outdoors Act um, and how it's an important piece of legislation to hunters and anglers, or maybe go into um, about rebuilding the outdoor rec economy. Go ahead, Curtis. Yeah, so I would say uh, now more than ever, it's important to create additional opportunities for outdoor recreation in light of, you know, as we try to move uh, back to reopening our economy from COVID-19. And so making sure the resources are there to repair our infrastructure from the outdoors, making sure that uh, outdoor lands are more accessible. Uh, and, and, and I would say the importance of it is, is uh, you know, it's what you grow up with. It's activities I did with my father, my brother, my mother, right? So it's, it's, it hits home, it's right to the heart of, of who we are, I think, as a country and as we are as a people. And so I think now, uh, when, when faced with the, the challenges our country's facing with right now, this is a bill that can bring us all together as, as it is in the Senate. And I would only add on what Curtis said. Is that back? Is that me? Feedback? You hear me? Uh, You're good. Okay. Um, I would only add on, on what Curtis had to say that uh, certainly a, a, a tough time and difficult situation throughout our country right now. And uh, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. And I know my boss is the same. And we were uh, talking the other day as he was filming that video. And it's kind of surreal that uh, just about a year ago, we passed S-47 and got permanent uh, authorization for LWCF. And just over a year later, we're talking about full funding. And I don't think that that is common in uh, in Congress for things to move that quickly, and it's a testament to the the support that both of these, the, the Parks Bill and the LWCF Bill, have from such a broad stakeholder group. BHA, you guys have been there uh, ever since your inception, uh, and and Julia and Land have both been uh, staples on the Hill. But uh, everybody that's on this call it looks like we have a tremendous turnout. I know that each of you have probably already taken action, and and I would only say that it's important. You really lean on others uh, in your organizations or in your community because that's what Curtis and I are focusing on on Saturday afternoon is is trying to make sure that our support stays strong. We have 59 co-sponsors and uh, take 60 votes to pass a bill. So uh, we're confident we have the votes to, to pass this bill. But the big push now is to just to, to tell everybody what good this does in their communities, how it's going to help us uh, economically, but also equitable access to the outdoors and what that means for for people's mental health and, and also just bringing people together. I, I know that most of my greatest experiences in life have been uh, outside and the strongest relationships I've built on Capitol Hill have all been uh, either in a small bass boat or a duck blind near Capitol Hill. So uh, there's there's certainly an element of this that, that we need your help to get it across the finish line. Great, thank you both. And um, like I've stated earlier, you're both key players on Capitol Hill. So how are you and the Senator's teams really going to orchestrate a successful pass package or passage, excuse me, of the Great American Outdoors Act? You know, it'd be great to get like a little bit behind the scenes for our, our viewers right now. I think they'd really appreciate it. Yeah, Curtis, I'll follow your lead. Yeah, so I, 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 it's a great question. First off, I would say uh, we're here because of organizations like you and your members. 
right? This doesn't get to this point without that. So thank you. And I would say, keep, keep your foot on the gas pedal, right? Uh, but what that means is each one of our bosses, and there's a, a bipartisan coalition of senators who are uh, what we would consider the champions of this, of the Great American Outdoors Act. And really what it amounts to is, is they form into one, right? Lance and I speak uh, some days on an hourly basis, if not more frequent, right? It's uh, left hand, right hand, we're all together on this. And it's almost like we're one big team working in a corporation where, in cooperation, excuse me, where um, uh, it, it, we, 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 it's like we're one big office instead of nine separate offices. And what that means is we're working with your organization, other organizations across the country to, to better inform senators as they look at this legislation and determine how they're gonna vote. And, and what's, more, what's important is that your organizations are getting feedback from us, we're getting feedback from you, and you're educating those senators. And so uh, it takes a high level of coordination, but it also takes a lot of, a, a lot of willingness and a lot of trust. And, and I'm fortunate to have, have worked with Lance over the years, known Lance for quite a while, known Senator Manchin for quite a while, and I'd like to think that's made it a little bit easier to bridge any sort of divide uh, on this, similar to your organization and other organizations, been able to work with them for a long time working on this very effort. And so it's all kind of come to culmination right now. Uh, Lance, I'll hand it off to you. Yeah, I mean, I think Curtis hit the, the nail on the head. The trust aspect of it is key. And, and I think that nowadays in a hyper-partisan atmosphere, if you can trust one another, you can really put the partisanship aside. Uh, and this is not a partisan issue. I, I haven't seen a, a, a bipartisan bill like this uh, in a long time. I think it's just people who like public lands and people who don't like public lands. Um, and there's certainly those people, um, but, but we are certainly uh, trying to build a coalition that sees the value in this uh, for their communities and, and what it means. And uh, the members have been uh, coordinated at the hip. So usually uh, the behind the scenes view, usually it's staff runs everything. Uh, I would say in this, this situation, members have been very actively involved on both sides of the aisle. Uh, last week, we had calls every day at the staff level at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, and then in the afternoon, the members would talk every day as well. Uh, that sort of core group of about 10 senators, just to compare notes on whip count. Uh, every Tuesday, there's caucus lunches where the Democrats eat lunch together, the Republicans eat lunch together. Uh, and this was a hot topic of conversation at both of those lunches. And then it continued uh, all the way into yesterday and, and we'll start again uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, when we all get back on the phone to figure out where we are going into Monday. Um, and then that uh, 5.30 Monday night is the, the closure vote, which is essentially our permission to get on the bill. Uh, and we feel confident that we have the votes to get on the bill. But the, the key here is going to be um, having a big, strong margin uh, above 60. So I, I feel confident, and I know Curtis does as well, that we, we have that. But it's, it's always better to have more votes because attendance is very difficult in a COVID world, as you can imagine. Uh, sometimes flights get delayed or, or something happens. So we want to be very uh, cautious to get as many people as we can. But that's sort of the inside baseball perspective of what we're gearing up for next week. Great. And just to play off of what you were saying, Lance, I, from my understanding last week, I think there were only 77 senators that were present. So I think like that cloture vote on Monday is key. And it, I think it's key part of our messaging from a constituent standpoint is to please and urge your senators to be there for that cloture vote. And then I think, um, and guys, please chime in, but um, we really want a clean bill uh, with no amendments to pass in the Senate. Same with the House version. You guys, is that about yeah. right? No, I, yeah. I agree. Um, and and uh, attendance has been, I think, lackluster on the Democratic side of the aisle um, because it's been political in some ways about coming back to do nominations. Uh, this will be the first legislative uh, piece of business we take up since the CARES Act passed in March. Um, so this is, a, I think, a different scenario. And I've heard from uh, the majority of Democratic members that they plan to be there uh, next week. But it's always good to have their constituents telling them to get to work and start to support something that their constituents care about. Great. And that just kind of leads me into um, my next question, um, even one of our viewers right now asked, uh, what is the most meaningful way constituents can engage with elected officials on important issues? Would that be our action center where you can see there's the button below on your screen, or is that a call to the Senate offices? What do you think is the most impactful? Go ahead, Curtis. 
I would say both, and I, I I would say we have we have two requests. One is to contact your 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 senator, and one ask that they be here Monday for the vote, and two ask that they vote yes. And but I would also say that's the beginning. That's not the end. This is like a marathon. Uh, all your hard work has gotten us to the racetrack, but guess what? The race is just starting. So. Right now, the ask is one: have your senator show up. Two: have your senator vote. And then we got to keep the keep your foot on the gas pedal. Yeah, I, I agree 100. percent I think that this is just the beginning. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's probably similar to what a lot of members do when they go on very long hunts or long fishing trips. Uh, it is an endurance race, and and this is going to be a long couple of days, uh, probably about a week, just over a week, um, if if we had to guess, because again. There's those folks who, who don't care for public lands as much as this group does, and they're going to throw up some procedural hurdles along the way that'll just uh, what we call burn the clock. So we'll be uh, in, in that period of time. It's really important to keep the foot on the gas. And, and I would just say for Senator Manchin, uh, he gets a report every night of all the phone calls that came into his office, we call it the hot topics report. And uh, if you call our front line or you call any of our lines and leave a message and say, please support the Great American Outdoors Act. He'll get that on his iPad every night, and then he calls me the next morning to ask what we've done on the hot topic. Uh, I know many other members are the same. Um, and then the other, the new thing that I think a lot of members uh, who are, it's a, Senator Gardner is probably one of the younger members. There's a lot of older members that are a little uh, afraid of social media, um, but social media and tagging your member of Congress and telling them to support it is a, is a huge thing. Um, and I think that this group has been great on that uh, as well. Great. Um, so I'm going to just review a couple of the questions that our viewers asked in our question box. I um, encourage others to do that as well. But until then, uh, this has been on my mind and I'd love to get your all's thoughts. But what do you see the remainder of 2020 looking like in Congress um, in relation to our issues? Do you expect another public lands package like S47, the John Ding D. Dingle Act? Um, do you expect an infrastructure bill that has some great um, habitat improvement provisions, including uh, a pilot program for um, wildlife crossing structures. I uh, would love to kind of look into your all's crystal ball of what you guys are expecting. I'll follow you, Curtis. <laughs> uh, you're, you're my my main plan was to give Lance all the difficult questions. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would say this, you know, uh, as it relates to Great American Outdoors Act, we're asking, and as you said, uh, no amendments on this bill. And what that means is there are any number of senators who have what we would call parochial state-based uh, uh, public lands, national parks issues. Colorado has a lot of them that, that, are, that are bipartisan. We're just not pushing them onto this bill. And so I would say what one thing that we saw last year with the John Dingell Act is there is enormous appetite matched with enormous support to do lands bills. Now, uh, it's a bit like putting together a jigsaw puzzle to make so, sure all the pieces fit. And, uh, but I would say there's enormous appetite, enormous willingness to do it if we can get those pieces to fit. And, and that's where I'm going to pass it off to Lance because he, he and his boss play a critical role in that. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, Curtis makes a good point. And I was uh, fortunate enough to work on the, the S-47 package with the senator right when we came into the ranking membership on ENR. And uh, it was a life-changing experience for me to learn how a big package like that is put together. Um, I think everyone remembers S-47 for the permanent authorization of LWCF, but there were over 130 pieces of legislation in that bill that were everything from little conservation easements across this country to little boundary changes on small maps, et cetera. And those bills pile up over a period of time. And I believe that's the first uh, lands package we passed in about five years. Um, so to do something like this, as I said, so quickly after, I think, uh, sets a pretty high expectation for us to pull together another lands package. I will say that there's a lot of interest in doing uh, that type of bill. We'll certainly work on it. Uh, I think the, the big conversation for the rest of 2020 is going to be how much floor time can we get for something like that? And that, uh, you know, again, sort of the inside baseball is going to get more political as we get later into 2020. So I, I think it, um, you know, I, I'm, I have a little bit of a business background, and I think that uh, in order to get this legislation to the floor, you got it's kind of supply and demand. And if groups like you were dem demanding these types of pieces of legislation and you don't want to just see it every five years, I think that's where you guys have to help us 
have the courage and, and demand this type of action, and then we can supply the bills. Uh, there's certainly an appetite to do more of those types of, of bills, but uh, I think it, to set expectations, I think it's going to be difficult. The best opportunity will be the lame deck, which will happen between the uh, election and the inauguration of the president. Great. All good points. Thank you, guys. Um, one of our um, viewers asked, what are some things BHA members can do and what are your offices doing to build support outside the hunting and fishing or outdoor communities? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, we've, we've worked across um, a broad group of stakeholders. I mean, LWCF benefits all types of uh, interest and We've heard from county commissions, we've heard from mayors, we've heard from a lot of local governments in West Virginia. Uh, we've looked at the environmental community uh, and then the business community as well, because I think that there's tremendous uh, benefits to outdoor recreation for, for the uh, business community as well as employees' well-being. I mean, I know that uh, a lot of us are teleworking right now and it, it helps us stay sharp to go outside and hike a couple miles or uh, go to the 3D archery range and blow a couple arrows downrange. Um, so, I mean, I think all those things are uh, bringing a very interesting coalition together. I mean, uh, this has been a huge topic of the member calls to have uh, President Trump, uh, 59 co-sponsors, a House companion, and over 800 groups supportive of this bill. You have everything from the Chamber of Commerce to the League of Conservation Voters supporting this kind of package, uh, it's really unheard of. And, you know, there's probably one guy, Mike Lee, who won't support it either way, but uh, that's okay because we have a strong bipartisan coalition. Uh, and uh, as I was reminded the other day, um, the quote that when you have the votes uh, to go vote. 